Welcome to Politics Done Right on KCFT. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Give me a call at 713-526-5738. That is 713-526-KPFT. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Yes, it's a different show at 3 p.m. This is the first of Politics Done Right. 3 p.m. on Thursdays now. We moved and we love it. All to the new audience, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. For the old audience... I am so sorry I'm putting you at 3 o'clock at this time. But you know what? We are going to have a lot of fun. And for those of you who can't listen to it now, guess what? We are on podcasts as well at kpft.org. So don't forget, folks, it doesn't matter that we're changing time. None of that really matters. What matters is that we're here to get the information. The first thing I want to do is to welcome... My new engineer, Shannon McCarthy. Shannon, how are you doing? Hi, I'm great. Thank you, Egberto. Egberto. Well, Egberto, ¿qué pasó? <laughs> I have to work on that one. <laughs> well, you know what? I tell you what, it's great. Shannon has been great. It's easy getting all this stuff set up here now at 3 o'clock. So we're all happy we're going to have some fun here. But you know what? I tell you, this is my first Politics Done Right on KPFT show on this new time and date. And I wish to welcome the new audience and hope that my previous audience will follow as well. You know, everybody is talking about the murder of Walter Scott by cop in South Carolina today. You know, so I tell you something. While, while the fixation is understandable, you know what, folks? It really isn't anything new. So it really isn't. It really isn't news. It really isn't news, but it doesn't really matter. You know what? It doesn't really matter. Because these occurrences are par for the course for many. You know, sadly for many Americans, unless, unless, unless it is seen, the aggrieved rarely gets the benefit of the doubt. So you know what? I am sure the airwaves are uh, you know, they'll be satur- saturated with Walter Scott today. I will take a different approach, okay? Let's take a different approach. Today, we will discuss Rand Paul. <laughs> Rand Paul, yeah. In the context of all that is happening in the country, it is important. So most importantly, how does it intersect? Including, how does it intersect with what, let's say, what has happened in South Carolina? How does it intersect with, let's say, what happened in New York? How does it intersect? What do you think? So, folks, remember, this is a call-in show. The number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. I hope that after you hear what we're going to preface the show with, that you'll give us a call. Uh, so, it's going to be interesting. But you know what time it is, right? Do you know what time it is? Do you know what we do at this time? It is time for the blog of the week. And it's coming, remember? It's coming. It's a new engineer. It's a new show. But it doesn't matter because it's going to come. And she's looking and she is searching and it's going to come. But while, while she searches for our preface, I tell you what we'll do. We'll go ahead and have it in. 
It's time for the weekly blog post. Now, folks, in the future, when you hear that little come in, what it means is that is a time that we read what we call the blog post of the week. And the way the show works is we kind of preface it with this, this particular post, and then we try to expand on it. And we hope that you will actually come in and expand on it. But this blog post today was called, or is called, Is the Rand Paul Coalition a Morphed Obama Coalition? Think about it. This week, Rand Paul officially announced that he is running for the Republican presidential nomination. Liberal elites laughed. They believe that the first-year senator does not stand a chance either in the Republican primary or the general election. Well... The Republican establishment, however, knows better. They spent a million dollars on the day Rand Paul launched his campaign to bloody him up. One does not spend that kind of money if one really believes the adversary does not stand a chance or is a joke. A few months ago, a few months ago, I wrote the piece, Don't Laugh. But Rand Paul could be our next president and posted it at Daily Coast and at the Coffee Party USA Facebook page. The blowback, the blowback was intense and immediate. The problem is that most are not thinking strategically. They are thinking with their hearts. Rand Paul's biggest problem will be winning the Republican primary. That is why Lindsey Graham, the Republican establishment and the neocons are all in attack mode. It was evident from his announcement speech that he knows that. It is also evident that his team carved out a subsection of the Republican Party to leave the ideologues in their respective, for their respective candidates. When one dissects Rand Paul's announcement speech, it becomes immediately evident that President Obama could have given it. It was a hope and change speech by another name. He mentioned Obama three times, twice in the context of the national debt, even as he conceded the deficit was bipartisan, and once when he accused the president of negotiating from a position of weakness, even as he agreed with the president. Paul said, The difference between President Obama and myself, he seems to think you can negotiate from a position of weakness, yet... Everyone needs to realize that negotiations are not inherently bad. The trust verify is required in any negotiation, but then our goal always should be and always is peace, not war. That's what he said. So he thinks the president is negotiating from a position of weakness, but he agrees <laughs> with what he is doing. Unlike Ted Cruz, there was no attack on Obamacare. There was no attack on Dodd-Frank reining in the banks. There was no attack on opening relations with Cuba. Wow, what a difference. None, eh? How many times did he touch on religious issues in any impactful manner? None. How many times did he touch social issues of consequence? None. How many times did he mention God? Once. And it was in the last sentence of his speech. He said, Today I announce with God's help, with the help of liberty lovers everywhere, that I am putting myself toward a, toward or forward as a candidate for the President of the United States of America. Ha <laughs> ha. Rand Paul even implicitly acknowledged a skewed social justice system in America. He said, I see an America where criminal justice is applied equally and any law that disproportionately incarcerates people of color is repealed. Has Hillary Clinton or any Democrat after years of having a lock on the black and brown vote ever put that center stage? Interestingly, Rand Paul was the first and one of the only presidential prospects to speak up and even write an op-ed about conditions in Ferguson, Missouri, and throughout the country. He awkwardly visited predominantly black Howard University and engaged the students on social justice issues as though he was summarily, even though he was summarily schooled, the effort was appreciated. He visited Berkeley, where he was very well received. Wow. Rand Paul showed some independence from the Republican Party over the years with a set of intersect interesting acts. He spoke out against the prophet of the Republican Party. You know who that almighty prophet is? Ronald Reagan. Yeah. He said, the reason the deficit exploded is they ignored spending. Domestic spending went up at a greater rate, greater clip 
under Reagan than it did under Carter. Man, the guy defended Carter, a Republican defending Carter. Jimmy Carter's last budget was about 34 to $36 billion. Well, it turns out Reagan's first budget turned out to be $110 billion in debt. And each successive year, the deficit rose throughout Reagan's two terms. That is Rand Paul talking, folks. And you know what he said a few weeks ago? Rand Paul has even said that his party's brand sucks. I will reiterate what I said in the piece, don't laugh, but Rand Paul could be our next president. To be clear, anyone who reads Daily Coast and other liberal progressive blogs cannot be fooled by Rand Paul. Rand Paul is a true Republican libertarian with a touch of Dixiecratocracy. The problem is that most voting Americans are not well informed. Most of the traditional media are lazy or programmed to misinform by the plutocracy. Rand Paul does not need to blow up the Obama coalition to win. He simply needs to skim the fat. His little excursion into the liberal base can do just that. His base is much more committed to winning and voting than our base. The Florida 13 election was probative. It would be irresponsible if liberals do not start taking serious steps now to inoculate on the populist flank. This will help not only the presidential race, but in every district. The biggest fear that is that if there is a coronation of a select few, many potential candidates remain undeveloped. Worse is the inability to recover from an unknown. The fact that Ronald Reagan and George Bush were elected president of the United States mean it is not far-fetched at all for Rand Paul that he could be the next president. Americans don't, Americans don't live in the past. They live in reality show, in a reality show based kind of today. It is not enough to remind Americans of all that Rand Paul stood for in the past. After all, America loves the redemption story. You doubt it? If you do not believe it, does anyone remember a famous Southern governor named George Wallace? Do you remember how much, how, how many people really love the guy now? Or love them back where he's from? If Rand Paul makes it through the Republican primary, he will make Hillary Clinton a continuation of President Obama's social economic and social justice Republican induced failures. To be more blunt, Rand Paul will win if he success if he's successful in morphing the Obama coalition into Rand Paul's coalition. It will be different than the Obama coalition, but a coalition no less. But a coalition no less. Folks, difficult topic. I know folks may think we're crazy for, or I am crazy for saying that, but I don't think I am. But Jan, what do you think? Jan? Okay, did we lose Jan? It seems like we lost Jan. Folks, this is a call-in show. The number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-5738. Jan, if you're still back there, give us a call. Let us, let us talk about the issue of Rand Paul. Many people think that, you know, um, w- when I wrote that piece initially for um, Daily Coast, they, they actually thought I was crazy. They said there's no way, no way in hell. Anybody would take this man seriously, any way whatsoever. The reality is that is how people get you. That is how politicians get you. That is how these things happen. They happen because you take things lightly. They happen because we actually believe our own story. We believe our own stories. Jan, we got Jan back. Come on in, Jan. How you doing? Talk to me. Jan, you're on. Oh, thank you, sir. I, I'm uh, pro Rand Paul uh, simply because he's uh, for uh, decriminalizing uh, marijuana, mm-hmm. which to me is a very important economic uh, factor. If they did that, uh, people had their own uh, personal cultivation mm-hmm. and not commercialize it. That's, you know, Billions and billions of dollars back into the economy, and those are whole dollars, not ones that we borrowed from China. Mm-hmm. And that's every year. Those people are those uh, cartels. 
You now, know, that's a lot of, that's let me ask you something, Jan. Uh, Jan, yeah. I mean, you said that you are for um, Rand Paul because of marijuana. Are you a single issue voter then, or in other words, um, it, do you follow the other things that Rand Paul is about, or not? Uh, I've seen him on Bill Maher before, and he, uh, you know, seemed rational uh, on, on on a lot of topics that I like. You know, with uh, uh, immigration and and uh, and like the, you were talking about the repeal and unfair uh, laws that discriminated against the poor. Let me ask you one other question, uh, uh, Jan. Is, do you consider yourself conservative? Do you consider yourself libertarian, liberal? What do you consider yourself? Based, and I mean, I know we all have differences, but what, what, how do you, how would you frame yourself? Uh, more, more liberal, more liberal. Okay, you know right. what is? I, 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 I don't want to. Uh, the reason I'm cutting you right here is because okay. you are the perfect template, and you are the because of people like you is exactly the reason that I wrote this. Because I've come across so many people like yourself that that you know really are li- liberal. You know they're pretty darn liberal, and what they see in Rand Paul is sort of a vision of a type of liberal that they can live with. And it is not, you know, you're seeing that based on how Rand Paul promotes himself and how Rand Paul is allowed to be promoted by, and by the way, Tim, I'm coming to you next, and how he's allowed himself to be promoted. Let me let me say tell you one thing and ask you a few questions um, sure. in this regard. If I told you that Rand Paul opposes same-sex marriage, Rand Paul opposes abortion rights, Rand Paul opposes gun control legislation, Rand Paul opposes bipartisan campaign reform, cutting government spending, balanced budgets. He wants a balanced budget irrespective of the cost to the social programs. He believes in massive expansion of, of the military, extensive use of drones. And, you know, I could go down a list. If I told you that in reality all those things apply, then what would you say? Uh... He sounds, that would sound pretty establishment to me. That's what I thought you would say. And what I'm saying is, right now, he, he does come across like a different type of Republican. He does come across like, you know, maybe a liberal libertarian, whatever that means. But I think when one examines deep inside of the, his theology, theology not meaning religious theology, but the, political theology, one may, may think a bit different about whether uh, he, whether you're going to get what you think you're going to get, you know. I mean, I, I look. I am personally speaking. I believe in we should be legalizing just about everything, to put it bluntly, oh, yeah. sure. because I cannot. I really cannot see why alcohol could possibly be legal and something like marijuana. Not. Oh no, alcohol. <laughs> the the uh, you know the the cost, the social cost of alcohol. It's huge. Not- yeah, just medical wise and everything. But it, and I, but I mean, I voted for his father twice. Right, and you know, I, there there are reasons, right? I mean, these these guys have interesting stories, and they 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 come across a certain kind of way. But if if you're somebody like myself, you have to take that with a grain of salt because things are right. not on, things are not only about marijuana or otherwise. But I tell you what, oh, no. Jan, I tell you what, you have anything else to add quickly because I got to move on to some other calls. Is it something well, else that you like had, to add? The only thing, you know, I had voted for Obama because he had sounded good, but he never changed anything. He had this, you know, same cabinet and everything. Well, so it, you know, that was bad. I'm going to tell you one thing that I tell people who say that a lot. I always tell folks that. The president is the president of the presidency, but the presidency is really within and of the country. A lot of people don't understand that if one person doesn't have much power unless he, un, unless more change. And uh, politicians, you have to force them to change. Activists, that's what they do. People, that's what they do. You make them change. President Obama is not going to do anything unless you force him to do it. But anyway, thank you very much for calling, Jen. And Tim, right, you're next, you Tim. Listening. You have a great right. day, Jen. Uh, Tim, you're on. Oops, not yet. You'll be on pretty shortly. There you go, Tim. Tim, you're on. Are you speaking to me? This is Ken. Oh, Ken. Come on in, Ken. That's all right. <laughs> it's a common uh, mistake over the phone. Well, you know how phone goes. How the phone goes, right? You you get right. you get a Tim that sounds like a Ken, and you get a Sam that sounds like a Tam. So anyway, come on in, my friend. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, um, it's a very interesting show. I'm really glad I've uh, been listening in. I, I called in to uh, talk a little bit about an event that's coming up. Okay. Um, I'm um, I'm with Healthcare for All Texas. Oh, Tim, I've heard about that 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 organization. That is very. It actually, you know what? That's going to fit in. Give me a a, a minute or so to announce that uh, that or that um that event because I want to talk a little bit about that as well. So go ahead. Okay, uh, Ken, that's him. <laughs> Ken, please, Ken, go for it, Ken. Okay. Well. The event that we're bringing to Houston is a um, a play called Mercy Killers. Mm-hmm. This is a, a one actor play. It's been all over the country and internationally. It's won an international award. Uh, it's a play that, uh, on the one hand, is a is a love story, and on the other hand, is a tragedy about what happens when. Uh, Someone loses their health in the land of plenty. Right. And um, we're going to have three performances in Houston. Tell me those dates uh, real quickly, Ken, please. Okay. April 30th at 7 p.m. at uh, Talento Bilingue. Uh, uh, May 1st at uh, 7 p.m. at the University of Houston Clear Lake. And Sunday... May 3rd, a matinee at 2 p.m. at Emerson Unitarian Universalist Church. You know, and, and that that is something that we want to, uh, I think everybody would want to promote. I tell you what, Ken, I'm going to uh, advertise this stuff at the, the, the websites as well, because I think people need to look at health care in the right context. And for uh, my last caller, I think, Jan, uh, about health care, what, what we should also discuss is what these new people that are coloring their true politics uh, what they really believe of of uh, healthcare, but anyway, I'll make sure that that gets that information gets out there as well. Okay, Ken. I mean, okay, Ken. <laughs> sure. Can I tell your listeners a, a few little interesting points here? Quickly, my friend. All right. Uh, I just want to make sure that people know that the performance on the thirtieth is a special performance. It's a benefit for the Living Hope Wheelchair Association. Okay. Which is a group of uh, spinal cord injured people Mm -hmm. who came together when they lost access to the supplies they need for Harris County Hospital District. And uh, it's a benefit for them, and it's a bilingual performance. We're having the play translated, and there'll be, like, captions above the stage, and afterwards, after all of these... A performance is going to be a discussion with the actor and the audience. Thank you very much. I got to go, Ken, because we okay. got to go to a we got to go to a break for a, a little inter break on the traffic. Okay. Sure, I understand. Thank you nice very much, my you friend. Mentioned. You have a Bye great now. day, my friend. All right, you too. Okay, on the East Loop, uh, counterclockwise at Turning Basin Drive, a heavy truck stall is affecting the right shoulder. Um, on the South Loop, counterclockwise at the Gulf Freeway, road debris was just cleared from the two center lanes, but traffic is beginning to recover. On the South Sam Houston Tollway, c- counterclockwise, a multiple vehicle accident involving three vehicles is affecting the left shoulder and left lane. It is currently 87 degrees and overcast skies, and it feels like 91 with tex- or Houston humidity, and expects it to drop down to 72 degrees later on this evening and 50% chance of rain. Back to you, Alberto, in the studio. I wish I could say your name more clearly. <laughs> you said, Alberto, muchísimas gracias, mi amiga. Okay, um, I tell you, we have another caller up. I think the next caller is Mike. Come on in, Mike. How you doing, buddy? You're hot, Mike. I, I just, uh, you were talking about kind of political aspects and uh I, I would invite people to to kind of go back and look at some of the things that Chomsky says about elections. Uh, Thomas Ferguson has done uh, a really exhaustive study, and, and all you have to do really is to look at who's financing these candidates to know what what they're really about. And he's also kind of expanded on what the libertarians, although they, they have a lot of the same kind of... Uh, kind of beliefs that that liberals have as well Mm -hmm. and but but the only thing is is that they don't believe in having a state per se that 
that helps socially with right. individuals. So they're they're all about these kind of private oligarchies. You know, they want business. And so what what is interesting? What you're just saying, and and first of all, I I I, I, t- I every so now and then I get into a few phrases with. Um, Shamsky, but you know, I, I have a few problems with Shamsky, and I think he, in presenting his information, sometimes it gets a bit too elitist. And I think one of the reasons liberals don't do as well is the elitism from the top have a tendency to corrupt the not corrupt the base, but uh, turn off the base from actually performing. But that said, that is true. Now let me let me ask you something because. Um, when we talk about who is funding who, right? I think if we if we are honest with with ourselves, uh, they're the both both of the both parties are really getting funded by the same people, and we have a very small ideological difference really between um, the parties. Now, you made an important statement when you talk about, let's say, the um, the the libertarians. They don't believe in the the social order, if you will. What's interesting with what you're saying when they they talk, when they actually believe in the oligarchy, if you want to be frank about it, is that there's no difference between there's one difference between an oligarchy and a government, right? They're both governments if you really want to be technical about it. But one of them is governed by the majority of the people, while the oligarchy is governed by the shareholder. Won't you say? Yeah, I think that they're they're going to be looking out uh, just for the interest of business because you know that's what's beholden to them. That's what's going to put him there. It'll be business, right? I mean, it, it, and that's what a whole lot of the young people, because when, when I read the, the, the blog post, when I wanted to, uh, you know, there's a, there's a little thing that I didn't quite say that I said in the original post where I spoke to how, I, I mentioned it in a little bit when I talk about how Rand Paul is going around to universities. I mean, he's, in a lot of ways, he's following the, the, Obama, the Obama path, right? Uh, convince the kids on, on voting a new way. And after you convince the kids, the kids convince their parents. And uh, Bill and Alan, I'm coming to you next, but I, I, this is an important concept that, that why, I, why I tell a lot of folks who may think Rand Paul is a joke, a lot of these are the same people who thought President Obama, then Senator Obama, was a joke. But what Rand Paul is doing is, is, is a perfect view or a perfect iteration of what President Obama did, and that is win over some select groups when nobody is watching. You go to a Howard University, you go to a Berkeley, you go to different universities and convince these kids. And you know, when my daughter comes home and she says, hey dad, guess who I saw at, on campus? And man, that guy was pretty cool. Whether you know it or not, your kids have influence on you. You know? Yeah. And, well, let, me, let me just add to that. Yes, sir. I, I, the, the people, I know a lot of military vets and uh, the people that are going to be voting for Rand Paul are going to be military vets. Right. They've, they've got their boots on the ground, and, and many more of those vets actually disagree with the war. They think it's a sham. They, right. They, they went in under false pretenses, not them, but they were misled. Oh, absolutely. And then they, they get there on the ground, and they go, okay, this is a scam that's being perpetrated on the American public. And then by then it's too late. They get out as soon as they can, and then they want to vote for Rand Paul. But you know, not only that, Rand Paul presents a good opportunity, right? There, you know, I always right. talk to people about uh, Democrats, Republicans, and others, right? In other words, there are people that don't. There are thousands, millions of Americans. They have very little in common with the Republican Party as is today. Millions of Americans have much in common with the Democratic Party values, not necessarily the way the Democratic Party is, but what the values of the Democratic Party, uh, what what the values of the Democratic Party are. Yeah, that's debatable. But but maybe what the Democratic Party used to be. That's I what. Doubt that's today. why I said the values. I mean, if you read the the values of the Democratic Party, you read the platforms. What I did uh, and, and I've done on the web website as well is put the values of the put the two platforms together and ask anybody to read the two platforms and see which one do they have as more of a symbiosis with and you find that it's going to be the one that says hey i want to be free i want at the same time to to be able to, uh, to you know to have the values that say I can be whatever I can be and that there is a, a social safety net and that there are uh, upward mobility they want all those things now that said Culturally speaking, there are people that their culture, and culture is a strong thing, 
the culture does not allow them to vote democratic and, and vice versa. What a Rand Paul does in a, in a climate like that, where you're fed up with your party, but at the same time, uh, you see this independent kind of guy, or looks like an independent kind of guy, it gives you the out for a vote. It gives you that out that you need. And I think that's what a whole lot of people are missing. What you say, Mike? Uh, yeah. Well, I, th- I think that's probably a correct aspect. And I'm going to just get off the air just as I say. I think that you maybe misread Chomsky whenever you say he's being elitist. There's okay, nobody I'll who's take more that. Grounded in speaking <laughs> yeah. with the public. Yeah. And if you talk to people, and and he's made his life's pretty much his life's work mm-hmm. by going around and and speaking to indigenous cultures. Right. And the man on, I mean, this is a person that stays up late at night in his 80s and, right. and answers. And when he was asked the question, why, you know, you're 80 something years old, you know, do you really need, you know, do you think that obligation is passed? And he right. says, I consider it a privilege to answer these emails. And so I think you might be. No, I look. He does use big words, but right. he also tries to use, to relate it to people. Right. And he's got a huge following I, of look. idealists. You don't have to convince me at all, Mike. Mike, I agree with all that you've said. You don't have to convince me. I think the guy is very smart. Not only that, I think the guy's values are in the right place. I've seen him a couple of times, and it just it, it was just how he handled some of the questions from some of the people that left that made a little kept a little distaste in the mouth. But that's uh, but all that said, I agree with you. The yeah, the guy yeah. is a scholar, and the guy knows all. I mean, he's right, spot on. Okay, but look, bye-bye. thank you very for calling, my right. friend. Let's thank go you. to Senor Bill. Bill, you're hot. Hello, my brother. How are you doing? Great. Hold on a second, Bill. Let me just tell folks. Folks, remember this is a call-in show. The number is 713-526-5738. Again, that number is 713-526-KPFT. Give me a call. This stuff is becoming interesting. Let's talk, Bill. Talk to me. Okay. Well, Rand, as I said before, Rand Paul is dangerous. Yes. He's a very <laughs> dangerous person. If you look at his dad. Yes. And and you, they're both the same. Mm-hmm. And uh, for for anybody to take him non serious, you know, you're making a big mistake. Look, uh, let me tell you, Bill. That is what I have been trying to get across for a long, long time. Some people think I'm obsessed with <laughs> Rand Paul. Okay, I, I, I Daily Coast. I am. I have a Sunday column that I do out there, and whenever if I want to be slaughtered online, I just have to put Rand Paul. My name and president in the same sentence. And <laughs> that's all it takes. And I won't only be sliced on the board, but I will have emails flood in my box asking me when was the last time I read a book or did I know anything about politics? I mean, you name it, I would get <laughs> slaughtered. But you know what? Uh, who cares? You know what I mean? You, yeah, we, you have fun. Yeah, the the thing about it is what we have to do. I mean, and that's what we do here at KPFT. So, folks, that is the reason why you must keep uh, stations like KPFT funded. You know why? Because we're not going to toe the line that you're going to hear on TV. You know, everybody, what everybody's talking about today, the, the, the killing of that guy in South, South Carolina. Carolina. It's a big story. It is a big story. I don't want to deny that it's a big story, but it's a story many of us already know about, and it's a story of ABC, CBS, NBC, MSNBC, CNN, and all these other folks are carrying, and there are other very important stories occurring in this country. Why aren't we talking about it? KPFT, that's what we do here. We don't. That's true. We are not you, thinking in one direction. Because you're not controlled by people who's, who's uh, I guess ideology is just one way thank you my friend you got it on the money anything else you want to add before i jump to alan my friend uh no that's just all i wanted to say was you know you know we need to take this serious with Rand paul just look what his views are on women and then he signed that letter about yes. iran i mean you know Rand paul is a smart dude and I'm, I'm coming to you alan but i just want to respond to bill on this because this is quite important you just said a magic thing there bill he signed the letter at the same time that he's agreeing with President Obama on, on the negotiations with Iran. He signs the letter that says, oh, my God, Senor Presidente, you are being too easy. It, you, you can't have it both ways. You cannot have it both ways. Uh, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is not the president of the United States. The president 
of the United States is Senor Obama, President Obama, period. Thank you very much for calling, uh, Bill. And I think the next person up is Alan. So, Alan, come on in, my friend. Oi, Egberto, como va? Como estas, amigo mío? Oh, it's Alan Alan. <laughs> yes. Uh, I have four quick points yes, that I sir. made that I hope will be thought provocative. You make your thought provocative. Who are you with now? I see Democracy Amendment. Interesting. Talk to me. Okay. Uh, first of all, the media uh, is perpetuating a duopoly because they only talk about Republican Party, Democrat Party, both sides of the aisle, Red versus blue, yes. blah blah blah. Yes. They ne- and the public is getting fed up with the uh, uh, dollar corruption and the campaigns and that sort of stuff, and they are uh, looking for alternatives. So uh, I am with the Green Party. Okay. And the first caller uh, who spoke about marijuana, mm-hmm. uh, I want him to know that the Green Party has always been in favor of legalization of cannabis and hemp. Right. And hemp, that's where the real money is, not just the uh, medicinal marijuana, blah, blah, blah. Right. But if we legalize hemp, then there is a fast-growing crop that can uh, uh, replace paper right. and even may be made into plastics. Uh, going on to my second point. Yes, sir. Um, the, uh, sorry, the third point. Uh, and that is the biggest issue being missed right now mm-hmm. uh, has to do with the uh I tell you uh, what, hold, hold on a second, Alan. I, I, let me break to see. Did, did I miss a, a break that we needed to go through? Uh, well, it's it's relative in time, so we are quite fine. But if we would like to go to a break, we certainly can. It's, I can continue on the other side of yeah, the break. Yeah, let's continue on the other side of the break. Okay. Sounds fabulous. All right. On the West Loop at... Uh, Forest Place, a wreck on, is affecting two main lanes and a shoulder. And on the South, uh, South Sam Houston Tollway, counterclockwise at Airport Boulevard, involving there's an accident involving three vehicles and it's blocking the left lane and shoulder. It's backing up traffic. There's a major accident at Sandpiper and West Airport Boulevard. It is currently 87 degrees and overcast skies. Back to you, Egberto. Muchas gracias, my dear ingeniera. <laughs> okay, um, continue, Alan. Alan? Okay, uh, continuing. Uh, speaking about something that's of uh, great importance internationally and locally, and that is the kind of uh, corporate fascism, you know, the uh, uh, government being run by business. Right. And that uh, is a Trans-Pacific Partnership. Oh, my God. Don't mention that word Okay. Here. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that more in the future weeks. But right now, in the Texas level, mm-hmm. there is a House Bill 40 that would uh, put the uh, state government would be able to overrule local government uh, ordinances and so forth that would protect the local people yes. from uh, pollution it and the is... like. Uh, as an example, is the uh, fracking and so forth. But that's just one of the things. But you know, let me it... let me stop you right there because folks don't understand that this this is an important thing that you just brought up here. There is a law that HB forty that you're talking about that uh, is actually occurring right now. In, in I think it's actually the bill. Like, Thing went through, um, went through already. But here's the interesting thing: uh, there's this county near Dallas that they voted not to have fracking. And yes, remember, yes. supposedly the Republican Party is a party of local control. They want the government out of your business, and they want more localized government. In other words, uh, when it comes to teachers and all of that, they want local control. What they're saying now is, even though these people do not want fracking in their backyards they now want to take that opportunity of those people to control their own destiny to the state in other words in austin republicans in austin's are taking away your rights in as much as they continuously as a platform say they want local control that is something that all our republicans listeners here must do something about if you're really intellectually honest about your position because what they're doing has 
it, it, consequences that are dire. But anyway, Alan, continue thank, real thank quick. Thank you, Egberto. And finally, uh, I hope you put this link on your website after you read. But uh, I invite people to look at the uh, greatest change we could make that would do away with this uh, corruption and so forth. And, I'd love to uh, see that. I'd love that, to that see that. That is at the website Democracy Amendment USA. Net. Let me ask you to do something with that, Alan. Go to politicsdoneright.com, either, either the website or go to Politics Done Right on Facebook and drop that in there and all our folks will be able to see that as well. So please go ahead and do that and we'll be, be sure to uh, you know, send some, you know, tell people about it. But yeah. anyway, thank you very much for the call, Alan, and let's go to William. William, come on in. Hello, Egberto. Hi. Is this your first program? Or? This is my first show at 3 p.m. on Thursdays. I'm moving from Mondays at 9 p.m. So, yes, it's the first show now, but it's not the first show. How can I... Or talk to me, my Have dear friend. Have you seen the movie The Dark Alliance? I mean, uh, Kill the Messenger? No, I haven't, but I know you're going to tell me about it. Well, you know it's about Gary Webb. Okay. He's the guy oh from yes, the yes, News. the one who told the story about crack cocaine, how it got right. to uh, Bert. Yes, the exactly. CIA under George Bush and Reagan. In fact, there is a show. They went over to Central America and Colombia and robbed Mark, all the cartels of all the cocaine and all the money. Let me tell you. Let me stop you right there because I, I just want to show you guys. K- PFT Mark Babawi did a show with the writer of that uh, of that book. Excellent, excellent. But continue, my friend. I just wanted folks to okay, realize well, anyway, that they get that here. If, if you watch the movie, you could see how creepy, you know, the CIA people and these people. Well, anyway, what what happened is what these people did after the Alley North and Contra hearings and right. all that stuff, they went on the books. They were all black ops, right? Right, right. Okay, so what a bunch of them did is they formed their own private security companies. And they were protecting all the businesses and individuals that were laundering the money and the cocaine all over the country Mm -hmm. eventually, right? Yes, sir. And then, if they hadn't already, they jumped in with both feet and got involved with the sex club and porno industry. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I got victimized by these people big time. How's that? Well, I met a girl about six years before the OJ stuff. Uh Uh-huh. That had been, she was for the federal government, and she's surrounded by a bunch of ex-Vietnam vets that got first dibs on all the jobs everywhere, right? Right. And the ones she's surrounded with have basically known her since she was a child. Right. And they all hire each other and the girls. It's what you'd call the new mafia with two new waves coming in and a modern-day coven. Anyway... Uh, the girl, I, 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 I got disenfranchised three years afterward. I had stayed away from this girl on purpose. I was working on a really big project. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is all in Southern California. Hey, do me one anyway, favor. They put uh, a satellite transmitter in my car so they could. Wow, play. they did. It was called The Game long before the movie was made with yeah. Michael Douglas and Sean Penn. Right. Remember who Sean Penn was married yes. to 20 years ago yes, for I about do. a year? Yes, I do. Madonna, Madonna, she did the same thing to him. He was completely out of his mind when he made the movie. He wasn't <laughs> acting. He was insane. Hey, look. And I saw him on Charlie Rose right at this time period. That's when I moved here, 94, 95. Okay. I think the movie came out in 96. Hey, guess what? Let me, William, I, I, cut to the chase real quick for me because I only have... Well, um, anyway, yeah. uh, so they're following me with the girl throwing underground sex club parties and making underground porno flicks as you're following. Yes. This is what they left out of Breaking Bad. Imagine five people in your local cable company or satellite company that are into crystal, 20, 25 years ago, that are into crystal meth and the sex club and porno gig, which... Like, I figure about a million to a million and a half people got involved with this nonsense. I know. And then, you know what the government did? What did they do? They wanted it into the war on drugs, and it, and it spread like wildfire you all know what? over the world. There, there, is, there is a little nut in what you're saying that a lot of folks, I think, will see. But you know what? I I had a massive psychotic breakdown. I, 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 I didn't know what it was all about. But hey. 
Let me tell you, I got to go to another call, William, but let me tell you something, and this is for you to not have your a further psychotic breakdown, and I'm not making light of this at all, okay? But that is, we have to be very careful in this country as far as what happens, and we have to also take better control because we're able to do so if we really have the will to do so. So, William, thank you very hey, much for calling. Okay, you know what a governor is on a uh, military vehicle? What? A carburetor? Yeah. Yes, I the do. Gov the governor died. Yes, exactly. Anyway, you have a good one, and thank you very much for calling, William. You're a good man, okay? Thank you, bye. You take care now. Okay, David, clarity about Rand Paul position. Talk to me, my friend. Yes, I'm, I'm a little bit confused sure. as to your position on Rand Paul. Uh, you're confused? Let me... Yes. Uh, you mean, what do I... In what way? Tell me so that I can... Well, I, I, was, kind of, I was kind of in and out of your initial talk uh -huh. and um are you a Rand paul supporter no i'm not no i'm not and uh let me did you think what i wanted to do in the piece right i wanted to come across as a neutral observer okay. of what Rand paul was doing but to for to be as plain as can be i am a left wing liberal democrat Okay, and I mean as left as you can go, that's who I am. But at the same time, I am the type of person that want to engage conservatives, libertarians, and everybody else. And uh, so, I mean, uh, I think that's how we moved a country forward by being able to talk. Now, my position on Ron Paul, Rand Paul, is that he is he is currently being dishonest, and he has learned a very good lesson from two Democrats, specifically Clinton. And Obama. From Clinton, he learned something called triangulation. And from Obama, from Obama, he learned to go ahead and create your base. Do not define, do not use a already defined base, but create a base. And what I tried to show in that in that uh, blog is how he has accomplished that, and he or how not how he has accomplished that, how he is going through the procedures to accomplish that. Now here is the deal. There's a lot of good things about that Rand Paul is doing that neither Democrats or Republicans per se are doing. Social justice. None of when Ferguson occurred, the first person out of the door was Rand Paul that had the gall to say, Oh my God, black men get treated differently. Brown men get different, treated differently by police. That's a fact that we know as a fact that very few people or many people don't want to acknowledge. Rand Paul was okay to do it. He got together with um, the senator from New Jersey. Uh, um, what's his name? Um, uh, that just got elected last year, New, New Jersey. Can't recall his name. Can you remember his name? Uh, Are you talking about the uh, Christie? Chris not, not Christie. Okay. It's a senator, uh, black dude. Um, I uh, am not aware with. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to remember his name uh, sometime. But anyway, he got together and formed an alliance with this Democrat in 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 the Senate to talk about. Uh, 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 reforming the criminal justice system so that a person who has a few milligrams of crack uh, gets treated the same as a person who has a milligram of coke. Right now, it doesn't happen, which means it disproportionately affects a particular population. So, I mean, there's a lot of good things that when he, he came out with, you had to sit down and think, oh, my God, why is he the one doing this and not some of the folks we would think that would be doing those things. So what he started to do is build a repertoire. Many people say, oh, it's just an act. But I tell you what, my friend, if it's just an act and that act is going to save a whole bunch of guys in, in, in the pen or from going to the pen, a lot of folks would vote for that act. And, and we can move on on policy, policy that he's coming out with. Yes, a lot of times speaking from two sides of his mouth, but Americans don't necessarily listen to that. Americans listen to what is out there now. So, in effect, do I support the man? No. I think he's really a facade. I mean, he ha you know, what we're seeing is a facade of, of this guy. But anyway, you I, say what, I sir? Think, I think you can, you can, all you have to do, uh, a good, a good, um, Reference would be to go to OpenSecrets.org, right? And you can see his top twenty contributors, right? And you can see that a good number of them are are banks, right? Our insurance industry, the Koch brothers, who is number nine, yes, contributor. And the the thing that concerns me about him is um, he seems to be much like other top notch Democrats or yes. Republicans, right. is that they choose to give us 
information that they wish us to believe, but not as it really is. David, and that's the magic. David, that's the magic. You see, you know about open secrets, David. You know about Mm -hmm. that. Most Americans haven't a clue what you just said. They don't know about that. So what at a place like KPFT where we don't have uh, the news, uh, we don't just let them say the news. That's why I came out and spoke about Rand Paul. I'm not talking about Scott Walter, uh, uh, Walter Scott right now, right? We're talking about Rand Paul. Because what you just said is, in fact, what the deal is. They decide that they want to run the narrative. And what we say is, no, you guys ain't running the narrative. We're going to not run the narrative, but we're going to just go out there and tell it like it is. You know it. And you, with the help of folks like you, I mean, you're calling in the station and making these particular points, right? But I tell you further, uh, David, what you need to do going forward is not only make the point here on, make the point here on the radio, but actually go out. Oh, thank you, Barbara Madera. It's Cory Booker was the senator that he's working with. You know, it, it's great when you have all these smart listeners that can, that when you get into a brain fog, they can help you out. The name of the person is, is, um, is, uh, Cory Booker. Thank you very much, Barbara Madera. Anyway, David, look, I really appreciate your call and keep calling, keep listening. Please share the program. Make sure that other people come here because we're going to be talking real stuff out here. Okay, my friend? Thank you. You have a great day now. Okay, John. John, come on in. John, talk to me. Egberto, good afternoon. Oh, Bert, my God. Bert, this, is John from, this is John from my night show. Go ahead, John. You talk got to it, me. my friend. <laughs> uh, How you doing, my friend? It's a small thing because you're running out of time. But uh, the thing that, uh, first off, uh, I really do think it's just a money-making scheme on his part. Okay. Okay. I really don't believe that he thinks he will become president. His ego tells him he will. Yeah. But uh, it's it's sort of the same as those folks in uh, uh, the pizza parlor. Yeah. <laughs> All they had to do is say a couple of the things yes. in an eight-seat pizza parlor has now made $800,000. Yes, plus, yes. You know, but uh, the, the worst thing about Rand Paul, as far as I'm concerned, is his plagiarisms. Well, you know what? And that's the thing. You know, there's a lot about Rand Paul that we can bring up. We can talk about him plagiarizing from, from Wikipedia. We can talk about him yeah. plagiarizing from all these places. The problem is, John, is that you are too darn smart, okay? You uh-huh. read. Most yeah, of us, but here's a problem. Most of us don't read, so that information doesn't matter. What we have to do to talk to people is get to their hearts and get to their, like, get them in that stage that they, I just can't do this. I have to do the right thing. John, it's coming down close on time. I have another call coming in and I have to go to Mark. So, John. Well, I will listen to you next Thursday, my friend. You take care, I'll my talk brother. To you again. And, and you share the call, okay? Take care now. Oh, I certainly will, sir. All right. Have a Come, good evening. You too, sir. Bye. Uh, oh, I guess I just lost the last caller, but the other one is coming in right now. And caller, the one that we just lost, give me a call. I know you had something to say, and I want to hear from you. But right now, let's go to Jerry. Come on in, Jerry. Hey, Egberto, it's Terry. Oh, Terry, talk to me, Terry. Hey, I'm sorry I missed your change in your show. I've been stuck in a meeting. Uh, I just wanted to call and support you. Oh, well, and thank you, sir. You know, I'll, I'll be here every Thursday at three. I appreciate it. Share it on Facebook. Actually, I did put it on Facebook into the um, thing. So you, you probably were, I know you're a busy man. So, uh, but go ahead and share all this stuff for me uh, that we are changing time, changing directions, all that good stuff, my friend. Thank you for calling, sir. Let me uh, I, I'll keep you, I'll keep you hot. I keep Terry hot on, on uh, the, when we go to the next call. But yes, folks, um, we're talking Rand Paul today. Again, I think we spoke Rand Paul a few times before. Um, yeah, keep Terry hot, and let's go to Johnny. Changing time, changing. Hey, Johnny, talk to me. Hello? Yeah, Johnny, you're hot. Oh, that was quick. <laughs> okay, uh, I'd like you to quickly, in the time you have left, mention some of Rand Paul's very questionable associations, very racist people in the past, very ignorant, very violent, in addition to his plagiarism, which combines really makes him an uh, unpalatable candidate for even dog catcher. <laughs> Oh, you're cruel, my friend. No, I'm honest. That's what a liberal is. Hey. Honest and brutal. That's what we have to be. Yeah. And we have to confront uh, these whack jobs on the right. Because if you show them any quarter, if you bend over like Barack Obama does, they'll just get more brazen. And then we'll be the land of the free, home of the brazen. 
Hey, let, let me tell you something. Okay, I will not disagree with anything that you said, but I just won't say it. <laughs> but let me tell That's you okay. something. Okay, I have the freedom to say it because I'm just a listener. All right, I love that. You know something? You're, you see, I have such smart callers. You know what I mean? I have to. No, keep... you don't. We have such smart callers. It's communal property. Okay, let me. Oh, well, thank you for correcting me. I do, no problem. I you're do. new. You'll figure it out. Oh, I appreciate that, my <laughs> friend. You have a good one. I met I... you once before at the station. I think you wrote a book. Yes, sir, I did. I appreciate. Yeah, I didn't have the money on me at the time, or else I would have bought it from you. I well, you just you just book. drop a line. But in I, my... I was telling you that you are too much of an apologist for the Democrats, and you need to be more in line with. Uh, I think his name is Al, not Al Green. His first name is Green, I believe. He's uh, with the the more aggressive Democratic. I know who wing you, of the Democrats. I know, you know who you, I'm talking you're about? talking about. Green. I know. I know. Actually, I know him personally. We met at uh, the one of uh, um, a convention in Washington. But anyway, I have to run because I'm running and out of time. And you have the smarts to do it. So you know, use those smarts and be more aggressive. All right. Thank you, my you friend. Don't have to be Jeff Berg. Just be something in the middle. I'll okay. settle for that. I okay, Johnny. Um, I take advice and I'll talk to you later, my good friend. Okay. Okay. Let's go to Mark. On your new time slot. Thank you, sir. You have a great day, sir. Okay, Mark, come on in. Yes. You're yes, hot, I just Mark. I had a uh, question. I'm not listening to the show right now. My father is, and he called, and he told me what was going on. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm a Rand Paul guy, and y'all made a comment. Y'all asked somebody earlier why they were both Rand Paul, yes. and they gave a ridiculous answer. Yes. And then you gave them some information. And I was just wondering what the reference was on that, so I could look it up myself. Uh, All the issues that I spoke to on Run Paul? Well, look, I don't have much time, but let me tell you what I'm going to do to you. Uh, Go to, go to egbertowillies.com. I have a whole, and, and do a search on Rand Paul because I wrote a lot of articles specifically on Rand Paul. So if you go to egbertowillies.com or if you just go to politicsdoneright.com, there's a flyover that you can get to egbertowillies.com and see all the different stuff I've wrote on Rand Paul. Let me tell you something first of all, though, because I don't want people to believe that this is just a hatchet job job being done on Rand Paul, okay? Because I don't believe in doing hatchet jobs. And even though Johnny thinks I'm too soft on the, on, on the right, it's not that I'm soft on the right. It's that if I get too hard on the right, I can't get the right to listen to me, okay? So yeah. I take the stance that I want folks to listen to me. And if folks are going to listen to me, it means that I have to give them some leeway to be able to listen to me. So, Johnny, I'm listening to you and I'm taking your advice where appropriate, but I still must get folks to listen. Now, Mark, again, go to, uh, again, you can go to Facebook, politicsunright.com, or you can go anywhere else, okay? So, I got to leave right now. So, thank Thank you very much, folks, for listening to the show. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Williams. You can personally reach me by sending an email to egberto at politicsdoneright.com. Remember, Egberto is spelled E-G-B-E-R-T-O. Change starts with you. 90.1 KPFT gives you information not tainted by corporate interest. Please visit kpft.org and contribute. Let's ensure continued access to real information and news remain available to all. Again, thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right.